Hey y'all, I Rick Sky here, and I wanted to provide my first feedback after my initial flight of the DJI Phantom 4 in the field. So, uh, first of all, there's a few things I want to talk about. The um, the battery life, that's definitely not a marketing thing. I was when I saw the purported battery life, I was like, yeah, right. Uh, but to be frank, I flew over. And I said it in my first flight video, check it out, but I think it was like 13 or 14 minutes. And I had, I was showing approximately 44% of the battery life remaining. And keep in mind, I started with a completely full battery. So that's, that's definitely an advantage that the Phantom 4 brings to the table. The controller itself, if you've used the Phantom 3 Pro, which I love, I've gotten some of the best 4K 30 frames per second videos out of that thing than I have anything else. I mean, it's it's absolutely incredible. So the controller, it should feel very, uh, very similar if you use the Phantom 3 Pro controller. Looking at things that are different, and I had mentioned this in my first flight, uh, let's turn it off here. The propellers, the way in which they attach, and again, they've got the little nipple rings. They've got silver and they've got black, and that corresponds with the markings on the on the engines themselves, or should I say motors? Yeah, I think I mixed that up. Um, so they, they attach differently, but as far as the, the sound of this when it was flying, and you tell me what you think, because I had the, the external mic on, but the sound, it seemed to be a lot lower noise so it it was in other words it was a lot quieter in my opinion uh, than the phantom uh, phantom 3 or the phantom 2 or the phantom 2 vision plus so it's it's a very very smooth and relaxing type sound and i think that's actually an advantage especially if you're flying in a in a situation where noise uh, may not be well, well perceived again looking at the the body of the phantom 4 greatly improved the way that this gimbal attaches as you can see there greatly improved i mean you don't have all the you know those little spongy things that you had on your phantom 3 pro that were sticking down if if it's there it's all internal i haven't taken this apart i have no desire to take it apart but you can see how clean it is on the underbody so i mean that's definitely a uh, that's definitely an improvement and what I mentioned earlier, since the motors are up higher, they, you know, the quick disconnect prop guards that I use for my Phantom 3 Pro and also use for my Phantom 2 and my Phantom 2 uh, Vision Plus, they won't fit on this because this is a new, completely new design. Now, obviously, I always fly safely and I, and I know what I'm doing. I understand the operations of, of this drone. But with that being the case, if you're trying to land on a boat that's anchored and is rocking a little bit, you're probably gonna break some props. And I would love to have quick disconnect prop guards on this to avoid that. The landing gear, there's a bigger space you can see here. It would be easier if you had both of the drones and you could have the other one right beside it and see, but this is spaced out more. So after my initial flight, I'm gonna be curious to see if I captured the landing gear in any of my shots. I'm hoping I didn't landing gear and the overall build quality of this phantom 4 feels a lot better you know when you put it in your hand you're going to notice better weight this doesn't feel like a cheap plastic shell it feels a lot sturdier than the phantom 3 pro and i'm by no means bashing the phantom 3 pro it's one of my favorite drones on the market today but you know and this right here has a continuous piece a little rubberized piece for for landing that's really nice I mean, it's it's a great design. It's uh, let me see if I can do this one-handed here and show you how these props come off. So you kind of push down and gently twist. So there's one prop off. Push down and gently twist. Push down. And gently twist. 
push down and gently twist. So now all the props are off. So it's, uh, that was effortless. And the other thing I like, is the camera guard that came with it. And the reason I like it is that if you were like me, when you got your Phantom 3 Pro, it probably arrived in the, in the little camera guard had probably fallen off. What makes this different I'm having a dumb moment right now. But again, I just got this thing. So bear with me. Okay, so see that pushes down gently on top of that. And then once that's positioned over your camera, you snap this in. And again, be careful here and then snap that in. And see, now you can see how this is uh, protecting it. So when you're traveling or when the thing has been shipped to you, you've got better peace of mind that your camera and gimbal assembly is likely going to, uh, to arrive in non-damaged condition. So that's a good thing. And see, that's on there, that snaps. So, I mean, it would, if there was enough force to cause that to fall off, there's probably a lot more to worry about than just having your, your camera guard fall off. And again, let's get this case. Um, that beeping, by the way, is my controller. And that's a nice feature that it does that because you know that you've left it on. I don't know how many times with your Phantom 3 Pro or whatever that you've been out in the field and forgotten to turn it off. It's good to have that audible reminder because then... You know, since this is wall charged, I mean, that can really kill a day if you're out planning to fly and, and then you turn your controller on, you've got extra batteries, but you don't have a charge in your controller so you're dead in the water. Um, and this is by no means waterproof or ruggedized. This is a very temporary case. Uh, but what this thing does, it enables me to have storage for my Phantom 4 until I get my waterproof and ruggedized case. Um, again, check the link within this video's description. I'm working to identify one and I'll be posting it on 400 or below.com as soon as I get my hands on the waterproof case for the Phantom 4. Uh, this long cable, as I would mentioned earlier in my first flight video, <clears throat> I failed to get my short iOS cable. Uh, so that's just what I've got. So it's, check the link within this video's description, you can find the short iOS cable. What I strongly encourage you to do, I did not take the little nipple cover off of the off of the other props because I know these are the ones I've been using. I have no intent to use those other ones unless I break or lose these. Just a good way to different, differentiate among your props. That way you're using one set versus taking two sets and, and making them not new anymore, you know? So the little prop sack st shoves in here. Well, fits in here rather, I shouldn't say shove. And then you put your Phantom in there. And that's the other thing I want to mention. Look how nice the, uh, the micro SD card is now. It's just right there, easily accessible. Much improved design, really is. Now, <clears throat> would I say that, um, that this is worth upgrading to from the Phantom 3 Pro? I mean, 
Let's take a look at that. That's pretty neat. I mean, it's going to take some more time in the field to know, but I mean, what am I getting with this I don't get with the Phantom 3 Pro? Well, you know, I'm still topping out at 4K 30, so my video quality is the same. Maybe I'll never get the landing gear in the frame when I'm filming with this, so that could be an advantage. It's got obstacle, obstacle avoidance. From a safety perspective, that makes me smile. But is it something that I personally need? It's not, because I fly a line of sight to be safe and responsible. So that's of no value to me. The active track, or whatever they called it, to where to follow me around, I've got to test that some more, but my first, uh, my first experience was, was nothing great. I mean, it did, it did follow me at close range, but then when I got further away, it stopped. So I've, and I'm sure it probably works. It's, it's probably operator error, but I've got to test that more. Uh, if that works 100%, is that enough of an incentive for me to upgrade from Phantom 3 Pro to Phantom, to Phantom 4? It, it's probably not. I mean, I got the Phantom 4, I love the Phantom 4, but you know, I'm just trying to keep it real here and say, you know, what am I getting? Well, I am getting better battery life, but then again, at least at the time of launch, the batteries are significantly more expensive than the Phantom 3 batteries. So, you know, yeah, I'm getting more battery life, but if I had the Phantom, if I was using the Phantom 3 Pro, I could just get more batteries at a, at a lower price point. But it is nice having that one battery in there and being able to have a really long flight without having to come back and land and change batteries. I mean, in certain scenarios, <coughs> I'm sorry, I've had the flu, um, but it's not contagious through the camera. Uh, in certain scenarios, yeah, it would have been great to have had a battery that could potentially last up to 28 minutes or so. I mean, that's, that's a perk. Um, I mean, I'm never, I'm never one to sell, to try to sell people own something just for the sake of selling it and for that reason I would say if if money's not an issue yeah definitely go ahead and get the Phantom 4 it's really nice I mean I've, I've flown it one one time so far and everything was very nice I mean the, to be expected as I mentioned the active tracking or whatever I gotta gotta perfect that this that and the other but all in all it's very smooth I really admire the enhanced build quality of the Phantom 4 I like the uh, you know the the improved way that the propellers attach. I mean, there's a lot of things like that. If you're if you consider yourself to be a drone connoisseur, that's a funny word to say. Uh, but if you consider yourself to be a drone connoisseur, a connoisseur of drones, um, then you know this this may be a no-brainer. But I'm not gonna lie, it is expensive, and it's expensive, and it's not. Uh, I mean, if this thing had a 6K or an 8K or a, or a 360 degree 4K camera on it, you know that would be uh, that would be a more uh, more challenging thing to say. Hey, should I upgrade or should I not? If it had that, I would I would definitely be jumping on it. But for what it brings right here, I mean, honestly, and, and I may be when I get back to the studio because this is my first flight. Uh, when I, well, my first day in the field, I did my first flight, and this is my second video, but I may uh, look at the video and be like, wow, even though this is 4K30, it's so much better. I mean, who knows? Hey, all Irix guy here. I wanted to take a moment to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. I'm an independent channel, and it's viewers like you that help me to continue to grow. I appreciate your viewership, and y'all have a good day.